Hey guys, Electric Pulse 61 here, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm sorry about that. I I keep getting distracted with uh, school stuff and my job and stuff. I've just I've been really busy, and uh, I keep forgetting about doing this series. But hopefully, with what little time is left in the summer, we've got you know rest of July and August. Hopefully, I can get some more videos out, get some stuff going with this Greenfoot programming tutorial. But enough about my sob story. Let's get into what I say. Jumping was what I said we were going to do. Jumping. We're going to have uh, an actor, probably not a hippo, but something down here jumping around at the bottom when you hit like the space bar. And maybe we'll get around to sideways movement. So let's get right into that. First thing we need to do, obviously, we need to make a new subclass of the actor because there's no way we can uh, create an actor without making a subclass. So. We're going to use this dolphin image uh, because dolphins jump around right out of the water. And we'll call this jumper. That's what we'll call it. All right. So when we compile, here's our jumper. So let's add him to the world. Put him like right there. Let's go ahead and save the world. So now when we recompile, he's always there. Now, of course, he doesn't do anything. I hit run, nothing happens. I can move my character, whatever. We need to program him. He needs to do something. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and open up his editor. Familiar window here. Hopefully, haven't forgotten it in what, two months since the last video. But uh, so what we need to do, we need to get him to jump. But first, we need to get him to fall. Because you'll see why in, in later in the episode, but jumping is just falling up as opposed to falling down so if we can get him to fall then we can get him to jump so much easier so what we need to do is we need to get falling so in order to fall you need to think about gravity and velocity gravity is acceleration velocity is obviously velocity so the unit of measurement in terms of speed is pixels per tick so how many pixels will this jumper move every game tick and that's what our velocity is. And our gravity, our acceleration, is how fast that changes, right? So what we need to do is we need to make two variables, one for gravity and one for velocity. We'll start with gravity. Private final int gravity equals one. All right, so let's explain this line here. Private means that it's only accessible within jumper. The character can't access it. The world class cannot access it. This gravity variable is only accessible within the jumper. Final means that this is like a constant. So in fact, we should make this all capitals because that's good Java uh, coding formatting to do final variables in all caps, like a constant. It's not going to change. So no matter what happens, gravity is always going to be 1. No matter what happens to his speed, his position, gravity is 1. Int means it's just an integer. Obviously, gravity is the name and one is the value. So what we need to do is we also need to make a velocity. So gravity stays the same, velocity is what's going to change. So let's make another private int velocity. Now I'm just going to cut that off here. We're not going to actually set it equal to anything. We're not going to set it equal to four or anything. We're just going to leave it right there with a semicolon. And you'll see why in just a second. Notice final is not there because Velocity is going to change. As he's falling, he's going to accelerate. He's going to start to fall faster and move quicker. So his velocity has to be able to change. It can't be something final like gravity that doesn't change. So if you remember from the first episode, we talked about the constructor for the world. We open up the editor here. This constructor, which is called as soon as the world is created. It says, okay, world, you're up. What are you going to do? The world says, all right, let me run my constructor. Whenever it's built it's constructed, this is what's called. It's what builds the world, or in this case, it's what's going to build the jumper. So just like with the world, what we need to do is we need to start with public jumper. Let's see, open up these braces. There we go. So here's our constructor. This is what's going to get called every time a new jumper is created. So what do we want it to do? We want to start off with some velocity. We want to make velocity equal to zero. That's what we're going to start with. Velocity will be zero. He starts off not moving, obviously. So that's that taken care of. We got that basic groundwork out of the way. So now we can move into falling because, like I said earlier, jumping and falling are very closely related, and you'll see why in just a second. So 
to fall, we need to be able to calculate his speed based off of the gravity and adjust how he's moving. And we'll do all this inside of a fall method that we're going to create right now. So here we go. Public void fall. There we go. So now we have fall, which is going to cause our jumper to fall down. So now we need to figure out how much he's going to fall down. So what we need to do is we need to make a set location. Just like with moving, we need to have a set location method. Now what are we going to put inside of this? Obviously we need an X and a Y. Now, falling does not require you to move side to side. Right? Whenever you fall, you don't go to the left or the right. You just go down. So we can keep his X the same. Just get his X and keep it just like that. Now the Y is what we're going to need to change. So whenever you're falling down, remember you're adding to the y value, because remember, 0, 0, the origin on the coordinate plane is right up here, and the positive y direction is actually downwards. So whenever we go back into the jumper, we want to add on to the y. We want to get his y, and then add on some value to it. What are we going to add on? That's his velocity. We want to add on his speed, because he's moving some speed downwards. So whenever we compile that, when we run it, once again, nothing happens. Why is that? His velocity is still zero. Let's just change it to four temporarily. He moves. But notice how he moves at a constant rate. He's not speeding up at all. He's just falling down at a constant rate, kind of like he's sinking in water or something. And that's not how things work. We need to get him to accelerate. So after we change his location, we need to get him to accelerate, changing his velocity. But we don't want him to always be accelerating because when you're sitting on the floor, or you're standing somewhere, you're not accelerating, you're standing still. So first we need to check if he is at the bottom of the screen. We'll set some invisible line, say 50 pixels up. And if our jumper is below that line, we don't want him to continue to accelerate downwards. We want him to stop moving. So let's do that. If get y, which is his y coordinate, is greater than the world height. From there, we can then subtract 50, which this means just 50 pixels above the bottom of the world. So whenever his y is greater than that, meaning he's below this 50 pixel line here, what do we want to do? We want him to stop moving. So we're going to set his velocity equal to zero. Now, what if he's not? What if he's above it? Well, in that case, we call this else statement, and we're just going to set his velocity plus equals gravity. So what that means is just add gravity onto velocity. Say it's 3 and gravity is 1, velocity is now 4. So what does this mean? It means when he's falling, he's going to be checking if he's above or below this line. If he's above it, fall as usual, accelerate downwards. If he's below it, stop moving. So what happens when we run it? He falls and he stops moving. See, he's not at the ground, he's above the ground. When we put it back up here, he accelerates. Notice how he quickly speeds up. Starts out slow and he gets faster, as should happen. So now we need to get him to jump. Falling is good, jumping is the next step. Now what happens to jumping? How do we do this? How do we make him jump? Well, it's very simple. We have the framework to make him accelerate, right? He's always accelerating downwards. And if you think about it, whenever you throw something, you're just giving it upwards velocity and letting gravity do the rest. You don't say, all right, ball, you're going to slow down when I tell you to. No, you just throw it and then gravity slows it down on its own. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to let the fall method do its work. All we do whenever we jump, all we do whenever we jump is we just set his velocity equal to some negative value. Because remember, a positive value will make him go down. So whenever we jump, velocity will equal, say, negative 20. Let's just go with that. Now, we need to be able to call this method. So when are we going to do that? In the act method, we're just going to check if greenfoot.isKeyDown space, right? Remember that from last episode. So if the space key is down, what are we going to do? We're going to jump. Now, this isn't perfect. It works pretty well. He jumps, right, which looks good and all. But what happens if I hold the space key down? He'll just float up to the top, right? And he can jump when he's in midair. He's not on that invisible floor. So we also need to check and see, okay, we only want you to be able to jump whenever you're below that line. So we can just copy this here because we already have that code. We don't need to figure out how to do that. And we can just add it on by making it a compound if statement. 
So if the space key is down and he's below that line, then you jump. So what happens? I can hold down the space key and you'll only jump whenever he hits that bottom line, which is good. That's all we need him to do. So jumping is done. Falling is done. We've got a little bit of time left. Let's cover side to side movement. This is really simple. Why is it so simple? We already figured out movement. We have it right here. We can just copy this whole move method over, right, from the character, and just put it down here. There's our move here. There we go. So now what we have to do is we can just get rid of this Y changing, because that's why we have the jumping. We don't need to be able to move up and down with the arrow keys or whatever. We just want to be able to jump. And so here, inside of these, instead of A and D, we can just make it left right and it does the same thing so now whenever we do this we just change it really quickly modify that move statement so that instead of using a and d uses the left and right arrow keys and instead of using w and s to go up and down we just got rid of that because we have the jump and fall method so now when we go here we can press the arrow keys and he moves and let's just say i don't like that speed maybe i want him to go a little faster we can do that too minus equals three x plus equals 3. We do that, all of a sudden, look at that, he moves faster, he can jump around on the bottom of the screen just like we want him to. Alright, so that seems to be all we have time for today. Hopefully I can get another episode out soon. I'm really hoping I don't forget about it again. That would really stink, because I really like teaching this stuff. It's really fun for me, and I hope it's fun for you guys. So anyways, that's all I got time for today. I hope you liked the video. If you want to see more of this, don't be afraid to click that like button. Maybe leave a comment. If you're really feeling special, go ahead and subscribe. I will be hopefully posting more of these videos in the upcoming days or weeks. Hopefully not months. Alright, you guys are awesome. I'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye.